Now it's time for the prayer for humanity, which we as a group are sending out the light to the world because it magnifies the light that we are able to send out when we do it together. Let us remember before God the great need of humankind and that we may pray to God, let us first make quiet the fretful mind of every day. Let us open our hearts to the Father, Mother, God, and to Christ, the Son, the Holy Trinity of wisdom, love, and power. In the holy name of Christ, and by the Christ light in the hearts of all people, we call upon the great angels of Christ. We feel their presence and their power. We attune ourselves to the prayers of all people of good will. And being thus prepared and ready before God, with all the will of our minds, with all the love of our deepest hearts, we send forth the light. We send it forth as a great star of light, a star of light, a blazing star, withstanding, overcoming all evil, triumphant over death, a star of the Christ light. By all the power of Christ within, we send forth the light. Let us hold all humanity in the golden light of the Christ star and see the power of the Son of God working in the hearts of men. We behold the blazing star with the form of the Lord Christ within its center, radiating his beauty, his spirit, his love, over all the earth. Now we hold within the heart of the blazing star the soul of the Americas, the soul of the people of the Americas, that the rays of the ancient spiritual fire that burns therein will rise and illumine the hearts of the people of the Americas with brotherhood and goodwill. May the rose bloom in the heart of the Americas and its fragrance bring healing to the world. Let us work with the angels of the elements, the angels of the earth, of the air, of the fire and of the water to bring healing to Mother Earth and to the world of nature. We see the light of the Christ star shining into the very substance of the earth. We see Mother Earth in all of nature, irradiated by the glorious light of the Christ star. And now, with all the power of the Christ love within our hearts, we hold in this great healing star anyone or any situation known to us personally who is in need of this help. Silently we name them and see them in the heart of the star. Amen. Now it's time for our healing circle. And it's going to be twofold today. 
Because there's so many things to pray for. Let us open our hearts to the Christ power, wisdom, and love. As together we call upon the angels of healing to draw close. We come into the soft radiance of this love as we focus and hold the healing light of the Christ star over the Ukraine and the peoples of the Ukraine. We see there being peace, a peaceful resolution to this situation. And since it's Earth Healing Sunday, I'm also going to include a little thing from the uh, Earth Healing book of White Eagles. Say to yourself, I seek to work in harmony with the angels of the star to bring healing to our planet. I see the whole earth enfolded in the magical healing light of the shining six-pointed star. I see the light of the star shining into the earth's soil, her plants and trees, and the animal life they support. Her streams, rivers, lakes, and oceans, her atmosphere, and into the hearts of humankind as they walk on Mother Earth. I hold in my heart and prayers the vision of planet Earth cleansed, healed, and in balance. May God's blessings be upon this work. Amen. for the reading. Barbara wanted to talk about the blessings of nature. White Eagle's readings are a little bit scarce on this subject. <laughs> but I did find a couple of inner teachings a talk on trees and the life of a flower. Although there's many other benefits to, ben to nature, um, this was the best I could do. <laughs> the invocation, we'll start with the invocation. We meet in a spirit of mutual love and helpfulness to receive light and wisdom from the universal mind. We pray that we may still the vibrations and perplexities of the earthly mind and aspire to the realms of holiness, 
wholeness, healthness. We mingle with the grand company of angels, archangels, and all the world of radiant spiritual life as one grand orchestra in our hearts are attuned to pour forth thanksgiving for our creation. You may, you may have realized that what, you may have realized before what an important place the nature world holds in the grand scheme of life. We are conscious of the beauty of trees and may love to be alone and walk under the trees or sit beneath and contemplate the sunlight and dream of life made radiant and beautiful. Even thus, you may not become fully aware of the pulsating life behind, beneath, and above those trees. A tree may mean no more than a tree, but through aspiration and attunement, you can be released from bondage and see with the eye of truth and attunement. You can be released from bondage and see with the oh, just, illumination, the eye of truth and illumination, the interblending of all life, the companies of angels, of nature spirits, and of divas, and thus become yourself a recreated and regenerated being. In this new world, you are conscious of a light which surrounds and permeates all those living, moving atoms of life. This is so different from the sea, contemplation of which will also reveal a new meaning. The sea may lie still and quiet, standing alone in some quiet place, the soul can reach out and become conscious of the vastness, the depth, and the profundity of life. Man's frail, earthly comprehension reels with the magnificence of the stillness and power of the sea. May the ocean speak to you of the eternal powers which lie within the creation of the universe. The waters enfold man in an enveloping yet impersonal peace in the grasp of an immense power. But the trees enfold him as a mother. And so we come to the realization that the trees are symbolical to us of the great mother. In this realization, we can walk in the groves, sit beneath the great oaks, or the majesty of the cedar, and become conscious of a mother's love enfolding us. Here, you may draw very close to be nearer God's heart in the garden, where the flowers speak, where we hear the song of the birds, the trees enfold in friendliness and motherliness, nearer God's heart, in these conditions than anywhere on earth. We desire with all our heart to become aware of the spirit world. You, in common with all men, desire to become aware of God. The first step is this. Becoming aware is to gain a condition of stillness, of peace, of tranquility. Unless man can enter into this silent chamber, he cannot approach the gateway which lies concealed within and which opens upon the great garden of life. Unlimited and eternal, the true garden of Eden. Within this garden shall man eventually meet his father God, the great spirit the father of creation. 
meditate on these things and you will find as you grow in awareness that this garden will become increasingly nearer and more beautiful to you. The flowers will speak. In every flower there is a vibration of God and every flower has an affinity with some part of man's organism. Thus the sages knew, therefore, that flowers, herbs are healing remedies. Not only the material substance of the flower, but also its accompanying color and planetary vibration. Flowers, fruits, and trees all bear reference to the sacred mystery of life. Thus the ancients knew, and thus the sages knew. Therefore, tonight we give this message. The northern hemisphere, hemisphere is now awakening, and everywhere you may witness the ever-growing blossoms of spring and wonder at their luxuriance and beauty. Remember, a process of spiritual growth and harmony is working behind those outward emblems or manifestations. You, as a brother of the universal life, have your work to do, not on the mundane plane alone, but to swell the great orchestra of nature. You must love nature and strive to become aware of the life behind the form more kind in your treatment of all growing things. Flowers and trees are the most sensitive form of life. And now, beloved, give thanks to our Creator and pray that we may become kinder and more loving. May we become all-embracing in our love and service to life and to every living creature in all the kingdoms, on earth and in heaven. Um, Carol, you could not have chosen more perfect readings. Thank you. Welcome to our Earth Healing Sunday. Those of us who participate in the White Eagle Earth Healing work are committed to assist in the well-being of our beloved planet. We try to tread lightly upon the earth as caretakers for future generations. Some of us do this by minimizing what is called our eco footprint, however we can. Recycling, composting, repurposing, and reducing our use of plastics and water are some examples. At the same time, we seek constantly to hold our beloved planet in the healing light of the Christ star. Here is our creed. I am a channel for healing our planet. I am at one with the earth, with the air, with the waters. I am at one with divine light, divine love, one with the sun. With every breath, I feel peace and radiate peace. I walk on Mother Earth, and by Mother Earth, I am supported and nourished. Today, I ask you to twist the prism and change your perspective a little. I ask you to explore earth healing, not by how you can heal the earth, but how the earth can heal you. Many of us experience how nature can bring us solace, in gardens, in forests, or just walking to our cars and breathing in fresh air and sunshine, or welcoming much needed rain. For me, in times of major transition, I go for healing to Mother Ocean. This morning before dawn, I was on the beach at Galveston. Along the horizon were the lights of the ships waiting to enter the Houston Ship Channel. This sight always brings to mind one of my favorite poems by John Macefield called Sea Fever. I must go down to the seas again to the lonely sea and the sky, 
and all I ask is a tall ship and a star to steer her by, and the wheels kick and the wind song and the white sails shaking, and a gray mist on the sea's face and a gray dawn breaking. I must go down to the seas again, for the call of the running tide is a wild call and a clear call that may not be denied. And all I ask is a windy day with the white clouds flying, and the flung spray and the blown spume and the seagulls crying. I must go down to the seas again, to the vagrant gypsy life, to the gull's way and the whale's way where the wind's like a wetted knife. And all I ask is a merry yarn from a laughing fellow rover and quiet sleep and a sweet dream when the long trick's over. There is something about the salt air and salt water that is very healing. One can find a similar experience in the salt water healing pool down the path from here at the retreat house. And there one can gaze at the forests and the meadows and the deer grazing, all creating an atmosphere of peace and tranquility. Or at night, on retreat, one can bathe in the healing waters and watch the stars come out. The oceans and forests and gardens all form part of our material world. For some of us in nature, we find that the veil between the material and spiritual worlds is very thin. Here is how White Eagle expresses it. We are endeavoring by slow degrees to help humanity realize that the spirit life interpenetrates the physical and there is no here and over there in the way you think. There is no impenetrable barrier between matter and spirit, but interpenetration. And the time comes soon when all will be touched by the magic and secret power which is spirit. This is already happening to some extent. The first step is being taken. In other words, the whole world is going through an initiation, a raising and an expansion of consciousness. The plant kingdom offers many opportunities connect, to connect with spirit through nature. There is a Kabbalistic saying that is a favorite of mine. Beside every blade of grass, there's an angel whispering, grow, grow, grow. In my view, another name for this grass angel is Deva. Devas exist throughout all of nature as the architects of life. They are the unseen other side of nature, responsible for keeping everything alive. Without them, we could not survive, and there is a reason they are invested in our human evolution. The word deva is a Sanskrit word meaning body of light. Devas work on an etheric level to orchestrate the energies that create form. They hold all the cellular blueprints and genetic codes for a plant in their memories. Everything in nature is endowed with intelligence and spirit. When we are in communication with the plant devas, we enter into a deeper relationship with the spirit of a plant. When we are in touch with the plant spirit, we are more receptive to information about its medicine. In this time of rampant destruction of planetary resources, the devas hold the key to rapid restoration. Because healing takes place in the context of relationship, they desire our human interaction to accomplish this. We are the ones who must carry out the wisdom they are all too eager to share with us. By becoming more aware of the role that the devas play in our everyday lives, we not only heal on a physical level, but also may discover that the strongest medicine lies in the ability to help us heal our hearts our minds and our spirits. Every time we receive the healing essence of a plant, we also receive communion. Some of you were privileged to experience the power of the plant spirit affinity of White Eagle brother Holly Hayward, an herbalist from New Hampshire. Holly takes talking to plants to an entirely new level and it was a privilege to participate in the Blessings of the Green Kingdom retreat with her last October. 
One of my sheroes is the late biologist Rachel Carson. Her words always serve to place things in perspective for me. I believe this affinity of the human spirit for the earth and its beauties is deeply and logically rooted. As human beings, we are part of the whole stream of life. We have been human beings for perhaps a million years, but life itself passes on something of itself to other life, that mysterious entity that moves and is aware of itself and its surroundings, and so is distinguished from rocks or senseless clay, from which life arose many hundreds of millions of years ago. Since then, it has developed, struggled, adapted itself to its surroundings, evolved an infinite number of forms, but its living protoplasm is built of the same elements as air, water, and rock. To these, the mysterious spark of life was added. Our origins are of the earth, and so there, in us, there is in us a deeply seated response to the natural universe, which is a part of our humanity. In contemplating the exceeding beauty of the earth, one can find calmness and courage for there is symbolic as well as actual beauty in the migration of birds, in the ebb and flow of the tides, in the folded bud ready for the spring. There is something infinitely healing in these repeated refrains of nature, the assurance that dawn comes after night and spring after winter. On land, my greatest spiritual teachers are the trees, their very being illustrates their ideal dual nature of incarnated humans, roots deeply embedded in the earth, in Mother Earth, and the crown reaching for Father Sky. If you want to experience deep healing, take a 10 minute walk from here or a ride in the golf cart to the sacred grove. Sit on one of the benches there, soften your gaze, and open all of your senses. Ask the trees to share with you their wisdom and their healing powers, which they are longing to give you. On a physical level, you will be bombarded with the phytochemicals that are the gift of the pines. These chemicals are called phytoncides, and they have antibacterial and antifungal qualities which help plants fight disease. When people breathe in these chemicals, our bodies respond by increasing the number and activity of a type of white blood cell called natural killer cells, or NK. These cells kill tumor and virus-infected cells in our bodies. Go then to the sacred grove. Commune with the pines. Breathe in their gifts. Let them lift your spirits. Express your gratitude and heal thyself with your help. Let me close with a reminder from Ralph Waldo Emerson. Nature is made to conspire with spirit to emancipate us. Be free. Peace be with you. Amen. Now let us be still. We aspire to the heaven world. We seek the presence of the Most High and there appears to our vision the form of the cosmic Christ in a blazing aura of golden light. We see his form in all its beauty. We absorb the rays which are pouring upon us all. He comes in beauty and gentleness, stretching forth his hands to bless. I come that you might have eternal life. He offers to each the symbol of the bread Take the bread of his life and eat in spirit, for he gives us sustenance. He gives us new life. He holds in his hands the grail cup, and the heavens open and the light pours down upon it, and the lesser light shines from it. To each he offers the wine, symbol of his spirit, the essence of divine love. Sip this essence and be purified in heart and be filled with love. Let us feel the divine fire flowing through us, cleansing, healing us from all confusion and pain. Be still 
and the Lord thy God is with thee. Now this service is filled with divine fire, and we are one in spirit with a great company of shining ones, those whom we love and who are now in the land of light. Whilst we are in the consciousness of the spirit, our loved ones are very close, closer than ever they were whilst imprisoned in the flesh. In spirit, there is no separation. So let joy fill our hearts. And now to God, the Father, Mother, and Son, be praise and thanksgiving. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, heaven and earth is full of thy praise. Glory to thee, almighty presence, for all things live in thee and can live only by thy love. Amen. <laughs> 